Here's a thought experiment. Imagine a rock with a five mile diameter materializing on the world. Actually, I prefer working in metric, so let's call it about eight kilometers. Now, hold a marble to its surface and let go. What happens to the marble? To think this through, let's consider the forces acting on the marble at the moment you let it go. There's a gravitational attraction on the marble from both the rock and from the earth. For now, let's ignore the interaction between the giant rock and the earth and the ensuing calamity that a five mile rock suddenly appearing would bring. To calculate the gravitational forces, we can use Newton's gravitational equation. Strictly speaking, using Einstein would be more accurate, but at this scale, Newton will do just fine. The general equation looks like this. The force from gravity is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of one of the objects multiplied by the mass of the other object and divide all of this by the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects squared. So we're going to calculate the force between the marble and the rock and between the marble and earth. So there's a bunch of variables we need to grab. First, there's the distance. The distance between the center of the marble and the center of the rock is around four kilometers. The distance between the center of the earth and the center of the marble is around 6,370-ish kilometers. Now the masses. Let's assume that the marble is, say, about two grams. The earth is 5.97 by 10 to the 24 kilograms. We'll need to make some assumptions about the rock to figure out its mass. Let's say it's a perfect sphere so we can calculate its volume. The density of rock, according to Wolfram Alpha, is around 2 tons per cubic meter. So the overall mass of this giant rock on the surface of the world is the volume multiplied by the density, or around about 7.22 by 10 to the 14 kilograms. At this point, working things out with pencil and paper makes me terribly irritable, so remember, spreadsheets are your friend. Putting these numbers into Newton's gravitational equation, we get the force due to gravity. Between the marble and the Earth, it is 1.96 by 10 to the minus 2 Newtons. The force between the marble and the rock is 6.03 by 10 to the minus 6 Newtons. Okay, great. Uh, some numbers. Let's put this in terms that we can actually visualize. At the moment of letting go, there is an acceleration by the forces on the marble, which we can calculate using the equation F equals ma, which is force is equal to the mass by acceleration. Or if we rearrange the equation, acceleration is force divided by the mass. Between the Earth and the marble, we get an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, which is a relief because this is the acceleration that every object on Earth experiences due to gravity. The acceleration of the marble towards the rock is around about 0 0.003 meters per second squared. However, the acceleration on the marble due to the force of gravity from the Earth is much, much greater than that between the marble and the rock. So what would you see? You would see the marble fall towards the Earth. But would you see the deflection towards the rock? Could you measure that deflection? Possibly, although it would be so very slight as to make any real accurate measurement very difficult. So that's an example of how to use Newton's equation to calculate force due to gravity. The take home message here is to pay attention to the masses of the object, but also to the distances between the objects. Gravity is subject to the inverse square law. Double your distance and the gravitational force you experience reduces fourfold. Challenge time! Can you calculate the gravitational force on the moon from the sun and from the earth? For this one, assume that the Earth and the Moon are currently not moving and that the Moon is between the Earth and the Sun, just to make things simple. Good luck!